Okay, guys, today I'm going to be interviewing one of my longtime players, uh, Vince, player of Humdu. Uh, so today I do hope to plan on like talking about the campaign that I've been running and how we might change the campaign, make some edits to it so that it'll be more fun in the future. Uh, so if you want, do you want to give like a quick introduction of your experience of D&D, &D, how much you played, and your character, Humdu? Oh yeah, um, so I've been playing D&D &D for maybe like five years now, I think at this point. Yeah, yeah. I think first one was... Andrew's Yeah, Andrew's basement. basement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, pretty much all my D&D &D experience comes from Joe. Uh, I feel like I definitely got lucky that I had a good DM to ease me into the whole experience because I feel like D&D is a little intimidating at first. Oh, absolutely. Um, but You did get to play with my brother a few times, oh, too. Yeah. That's actually the best DM I've ever played with. Yeah, no there's no... Uh, <laughs> none taken. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah. Okay, well then, let's just get right into it. So, concerning... Oh, actually, no. Give me a little bit about Humdu. Oh, yeah. His um, character. Humdu... Yeah, I'm not even going to lie, he's straight knockoff of Aang from Avatar. Um, he's got a little bit of Iroh. Yeah, a, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, definitely Avatar-inspired. He's a uh, human monk uh, whose monastery was subjected by uh, some dragon. Yep, Zindarek, demon queen of the heavens. Yep, and then they were saved by the heroes whose names I forgot. Sonya and Galliard. Yep, and... Uh, after that, he's just been on a pretty much a you know a tirade, <laughs> killing anyone he can. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, classic kung fu uh, yeah, martial yeah. artist type of character. He's like Aang if Aang decided to go on like an evil arc. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Um, okay, so talking about the campaign uh, in generalities terms now. Uh, so uh, what would have been your most your like favorite parts what do you want more of in any given session um, well I I'll say like just kind of overarching the thing that I really like about this campaign is that it's kind of like a revolving door in the way that any person can walk in and play and enjoy the experience and have a personalized experience for them mm -hmm. um, and so like not recently, but at least in the beginning, it was we had different people in the group. Yeah, we constantly. started losing. Uh, yeah. no, <laughs> we had a couple of interest. people that showed up once, yeah. and <laughs> never yeah. again. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. I thought you did an amazing job with that. That was really cool. Um, well, I guess I'm thinking more specifically, uh, like active like scenes in a session that we could like have yeah. more of. Like, would you prefer? more chances of like having role play social encounters or would you prefer to have uh like more combat or something in between like action scenes where you get you know maybe chances to show off being a monk something along those lines um like is there any type of activity that you prefer like participating in in a session over other things that you can be doing in a session? Yeah, personally, I think I enjoy the fighting aspect of the session, as you've seen from my character. Mm -hmm. He just punches people before they get a chance to yeah. do anything, <laughs> really. But, uh, yeah, that's easily my favorite. I know a lot of other people get bored <clears throat> with combat, but It's that's definitely my a very, like, common controversy, that, like, dichotomy of combat versus yeah. non-combat encounters in D&D. &D. Oh, no, I love it. I love it because I feel like that's the time I can role-play my character the best. Like, I don't think I'm the best role-player. Um, like, it's really nice watching Gabe, and I do enjoy that. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, Gabe's pretty chance, good at it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I don't think I'm nearly as creative or quick as he is, and so... Combat definitely allows me to be more creative, I think. Yeah, yeah, you definitely you get chances to uh, perform some acrobatics and use your monk abilities to your advantage there. Yeah. Um, so I guess the next question that I had this leading into is what would you want less of? Less of? Um, I think there's definitely like just things beyond whatever we're actively doing uh, like in game as your characters are participating in them but more so like what like things that just happen at the table 
that uh, you might want to try to steer away from if possible? Um, oh man, that's tough. I feel like I've, for the most part, been very satisfied with the entire campaign. Um, like sometimes we might spend some time talking to merchants or haggling like prices yeah. and stuff. And I'm okay with all that. Yeah, I I try to keep it uh, as as like quick and snappy as I can. I think um, I think you, you, you so you have this rule now where like a long rest is like once per session or pretty much like the end of session. It's effectively somewhere between like three and six days. Yeah, so I wish that I pretty much I wish I could sleep off injuries faster. <laughs> is my uh, issue. yeah because yeah, yeah. um kind of become like this de facto tank in the group and so i'm constantly dead that is true yeah once you run out of hp and then for the rest of the session Mm -hmm. then you just have to sit back and you're like you can't run in there because if you do you just get hit once and then you're down and i'm done yeah and then no one else even has anywhere close to the ability to like get hit at all yeah um because at least you've got your step of the wind and can like dodge and like for sure can prevent a bit of damage in that way um, but yeah, no, that that is. I, I think there's a couple of solutions we could have. Yeah. Like either you could get like, well, ideally, I like the best solution I think would be is we convince another player to be like a tank type character no. that can get hit a lot over the course of the session. Uh, or like if we can't get that, like an NPC, we could also do like. Oh yeah, get just. Uh... Dim hot. Yeah, Dim hot yeah. could uh, learn how to take a hit. That that could be his style. Is yeah. He becomes like the punching bag type. He just becomes really good at. Uh, did you ever see that Simpsons episode where Homer gets becomes a boxer? No. No. <laughs> well, in the episode, he basically he gets hit a lot, and then the opponent just gets so incredibly tired after just like trying to <laughs> wail on yeah. him that Homer just like pushes them over at the end. Uh, then I think it ends with him getting like utterly demolished yeah so that'll be dim hot pretty soon <laughs> yeah i think that could be fun honestly dim hot will be my human game. shield and i'll just throw punches from behind him yeah now do you think it would be more entertaining or maybe more true to his character if, if he was really good at dodging or if he was just really good at getting hit definitely really good at take, getting hit okay, okay yeah for sure because if you think about like uh the abuse i've put dim hot through just my character alone, like That's true. imagine what was happening to him at the monastery. Like he was just getting, he was the punching bag for sure. I do think that would be fun to pursue. That's why actually. he left. <laughs> um, okay, all right. So I'm going to move on to the next question. Now this one, I, I wanted to ask, what do you find the most like difficult part of playing was? I think you sort of covered that with like the role playing, uh, you know, discussion. So I guess the next part of that question would be, like, what can we do to try to make that easier to try to, you know, not not feel as, like, as much of, like, a barrier to, like, okay. surpass or whatever? Yeah, I feel like, um, well, firstly, it's person to person. I think some people find that it's easier to play characters than others, but I also think just in general, uh, I do a poor job of connecting with my character and, like, uh, really, I guess understanding the person that it's going to, uh, the character is going to be. I don't like I, I think you've got a pretty good idea. Like I, I don't think you do poorly in that regard. I think you've got a pretty good idea. Like I will say something I brought up the darts and uh, you know I just kept saying like you can use ranged attacks. And then I remember like oh right like it's he specifically was taught by his mentor by his monk tradition yeah. to use anything other than unarmed attacks is truly is, just there's pathetic. nothing more yeah. dishonorable than yeah, to absolutely. have to use a weapon and not to just use your fist and after I remember that I was like right and I as soon as I realized that I was like oh he's actually been doing a great a better <laughs> job of me than, than remembering like that so oh, uh, so yeah I, I, don't, like, I don't think you do a ch- bad job in that regard I like I think if there's any problem with connection it's that I don't think there's enough, like, intertwining, like, ties between uh, the, like, the characters in the party. 
Like, I don't uh, think you've got no much idea. of anything connecting you to Cletus or to Adrian specifically. Yeah. That's definitely not on you. That's on, well, literally everyone on the table, me included. Um, and I, I do feel like there's, like, a, a huge part of D&D is that, like, is, is the party either, like, arguing with each other and or, like, working together in some extent. Talk, like, having some interplay between them. And I'm not entirely sure... This latest session, I guess, what I tried to do, I was... So, so there was that camp that you guys had to, like, assault and siege. I guess I was hoping that, like, in the planning process of, like, how you guys wanted to take it, there would be some back and forth about, like, arguing about what would be the best approach. Mm-hmm. You guys did quickly agree on a single plan, so there is, like, synergy there. Oh, man. Um... Yeah. But I don't know if there's anything else that I could try to do to maybe more so, like, cultivate that, like, environment where you guys feel more of, like, a need to want to, like, discuss among each other. Yeah, I feel like we're really delving into some, like, parasocial relationships at this point. Cause uh, like, I feel oh, like yeah, absolutely. This is, yeah, beyond D&D. Beyond this is D&D. encapsulated just everything. Yeah, because when you're sitting at the table, you don't want to sit there and argue with everybody that's there. Even if it's in character, or maybe if we play more and get more comfortable with it, like ten years, we'll feel comfortable having arguments in character yeah, that are yeah. outside of the uh, game. But, uh, like for instance, I remember when they wouldn't let me kill that cobalt, and then that cobalt oh, turned around and fucked us. That became a big yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like real life mad. <laughs> like I yeah, wasn't yeah. allowed to kill that. That was, that was great. That uh, no, I think. Uh, John Hill, he just gets very invested and like yeah. he's just, yeah. uh, he's very very true to like any of his beliefs, which I really really appreciate about yeah. him. As a oh man, no, but yeah, no, that was, that was, was actually life, a great man. moment. Yeah, that that was a uh, <laughs> that was like one of the. I feel like there hasn't been a lot of like tension in the oh, party yeah, at all. Sure, yeah. That was easily the highest tension moment that had ever yeah. like come up. Oh yeah, no, because I remember immediately following that, like we're talking to something that's clearly a bad guy. Immediately following that, like uh, we get attacked by some amalgam, and I was like, "Well, why don't you guys try talking to it?" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, walked out of the building. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That definitely. That, that had an impact on the whole rest of the session. Uh, but, you know, that, I don't think that's outside of what Humdu would do. Uh, like, he <laughs> yeah, does seem maybe. like... He's been taught for 40-plus years, his entire life, to solve his issues by punching them. Yeah. Um, which... Oh, did you finish The Last of Us, by the way? I did not, no. No, okay. No. Well, like, I think you even see it in, like, the beginning parts. But, like, somewhat similar to Joel, I oh, would absolutely. say. In that, yeah. like, he's kind of, like, just a violent psychopath. Like, yeah. he can yeah. kind of... Other people sort of get... It's sort of, like, disguised and hidden when he talks to other people. And they, like, see that he's got, like, good intentions. Or maybe not that he even has good intentions, but no. what he happens to be working on and what he happens to be doing just happens to align with things that would be considered good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, like, in that way, no one really questions his kind of psychopath behavior. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but every once in a while, I do think that would be, like, interesting to do more of is the, like... His violence just causing problems for people. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because, uh, no, he is a very hyper-violent character. <laughs> I'm just... Um, I'm trying to think of a single issue I've... Like, we've had this entire time where I didn't just punch something. Because uh, even, even when we couldn't get into somewhere, I just punched the gate or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, stuff just, like that. Oh, man. Yeah. Um... What was the original question? <laughs> oh no, that that was. I, I think we were on. What was the most difficult part? We were talking about role playing. Oh and then we yeah. Said, what what can we do to make role playing easier? I guess is what I was trying to say. Or like, well, what can I do to try to? Because uh, I do think that argument with John Hill and his priest about the cleric was great, yeah, and I yeah. think I want more moments like that. Uh, so I guess I guess the answer is just like put more conflict between like 
Yeah. Like, if I, you know, if Cletus, his brother, dwarf, or whatever, shows up and is like... Isn't Cletus a gnome? Cletus, he's a dwarf. He's a dwarf? Is he just super small? Is that, like, the whole thing? <laughs> I don't think so. Wait, who's the gnome? No, uh, Nimsy. Oh, it's JB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, but, yeah, so, like, if something maybe along the lines of, like, Cletus's cousin shows up and, like, for whatever reason, he's, like, a real scumbag to you and is, like, mm. inciting some sort of argument and violence with you, and then, like, Cletus is, like, you can't fight him. Like, he's my cousin. Like, just let it go. I think stuff like that yeah. could be interesting. Yeah. Well, what's the chances that Luke's just like, well, he did it. He chose to, you know, pick an argument with you, so. That's, yeah, I guess <laughs> that's, well, that's up to Cletus to decide, you know? True. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess I could try to either, because I do feel like, yeah, he he would probably side with you yeah, over yeah, his probably. cousin. Well, you have to have more investment, like, exactly, probably, exactly. like. So I'd have to be like, oh, yeah, this cousin, like, Cletus, he, like, saved your life in the past, like. You owe this guy a life debt. Yeah. And now he's trying to start a fight with Humdu. Yeah, for sure. And, like, you've like, got to pick a side. Maybe just something that pulls the group in two different directions, like uh, something with Adrian's wife and him having to, like, I don't know, go after that and the rest of the group having a different objective and that being... I do really like attention. the A plot, B plot. I think it's tough to pull it off is. in D&D because it's it like is. you don't want to have someone sitting there for an extended amount of time just, just waiting. Yeah. But I do think it it gives you room for like free tension when it's just like, okay, yeah, something exciting sure. is happening, something exciting is happening. And then it's just like right before this moment, we cut to the other group. And now I think that serves a couple of purposes because now like plot A now they get a few minutes to decide how they want to react to something and make it as dramatic and awesome as possible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the other group, during their whole discussion and thing that they have going on, like, everyone is tense about how plot A is going to resolve mm-hmm. when we cut back to it. So I do think it's great in that sense, but you get, yeah, you only have half the group playing at once, yeah. which is annoying as a player to just... Like, even if what's going on is entertaining and fun... Sitting there for 15 minutes and watching other people play and you're not allowed to interact with it at all it just gets tired. After yeah, a while. for sure. Like, uh, dude, even when I get that chance to like sit and think about what I want to do and how I want to say it, I feel like when the moment actually arises, I feel like D&D, like nothing else I've ever done, gives me the craziest stage fright. Like, <laughs> like as no, soon I as feel it's my it, yeah. turn to be on the spot and role play and talk, I'm like nervous and like... <laughs> fumble over my words and stuff yeah oh man Uh, it can definitely be tough you just sort of yeah it's definitely the kind of thing that you both a have to like get used to and b like when you do stumble you just have to not get caught up on it and just power through and continue and pretend that it like didn't even happen with literally all of life and every activity ever (laughs) it's all a confidence game yeah absolutely oh dude i lose all my confidence as soon as we get in the table (laughs) you know shirlene honestly really impresses me with her like ability to at least attempt to role play like even if she doesn't really know what's going on i do wish we could play with her more often i feel like we got off to a rocky start with that just because it was a situation where she like made a character and then we immediately just like started playing yeah. whereas like I definitely uh, like I prefer having a situation where we set aside a time to make characters and then just like decide everything about your backstory mm-hmm. and like have a minute to work on things that can come up in the future and then like explore those things while we play yeah, rather sure. than like uh, like I think if you're really experienced and you like have played a lot of D&D then you can just come up with stuff on the fly yeah, about sure. things that might have happened in the past but when you're still in that very new stage you like definitely heavily rely on like what you have written down on mm-hmm. your character sheet yeah definitely um well, back to the questions. Yeah. I wanted to say, another thing that I think that is difficult, at least at first, is, um, like, knowing all the abilities and keeping track of them. Oh, yeah, That definitely. is super difficult. <laughs> that one's, like... Because you run into situations where, like, this would be really helpful if I remembered it. 
and I forgot it, and so now I've already made my action or decision for the turn, and I've forgotten this much better option that I had. I do think we could maybe, like... Well, okay, this doesn't solve that problem in specific, or, like, particularly, but we could have, like, indicators of, like, almost make it, like, board gamified, and that, like, if you have six key points, we just give you, like, six tokens, then you can, like, just cash those in, like, hand them in yeah. as a visual indicator to both me as a DM and every other player to instantly recognize, okay, he still has plenty of ability uses left, or he is starting to run out of ability uses, rather than everyone having to ask, like, how many key do you have left? I know that doesn't answer that problem. Yeah, um, yeah. The abilities, yeah, you just... Uh, you gotta remember. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if there's any other way than just, like, you gotta memorize your character sheet yep. and then uh i do think every once in a while maybe we should have like refresher like just go over everyone's character read all your abilities check the book the rule book and see like okay okay so these works work exactly yeah. these ways and uh, just so that like those every, every once in a while we're like wait can you do that with this ability like is that how that one works we would just have like a better idea because it's fresher in our mind yeah absolutely um but I do agree in general that that, that is a problem, is just having to keep track of so much mechanical stuff in yeah. the game. No, especially playing a monk, too. Like, or any spellcaster, honestly. You know, spellcasters are way, spell way... Spellcaster is the worst. Yeah, because, yeah. like, uh, you really... you got, like, three key options. Yeah. Uh, and now you have to remember deflect missiles when you get hit. Yeah, so I got four key options. And then... Yeah. Uh, step a win, patient defense... And flurry of blows. Flurry blows, yeah. Then now the flight missiles, which is okay. And yeah, and I guess the signature weapon feat. Oh yeah, signature which, uh, weapon feat. That's something else to remember. Uh, like unarmored defense, that's pretty passive. So yeah. You don't have to think about that. Uh, but yeah, it does. It only gets worse and worse and worse yeah, as you continue sure. to level up. Because eventually you're gonna get like seven, eight key ability options or something. Um. So yeah, honestly, I yeah, I don't know. I just remember. Yeah, that's I think fine. that's just a, you got to put in the work kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so this again, we might have already answered it, but what has been your favorite scene and or session that has like occurred so far? I think the first time we went into the pyramid, like when we went mm. through hell. Uh, so the backstory for the viewers, uh, we were looking for Lorius Payne. Some like evil, evil magician. necromancer, yeah, yeah, yeah. The same thing. <laughs> and we ended up finding a portal in a cave, and the portal was like very obviously to hell. But uh, I was like a kid in a cave. I was like, "Ooh, what does this do?" I, like, open up the portal to yeah. hell. Then we entered hell, and we met a bunch of demons and whatnot. Made friends with the demons, of course, as one does. Um, and then. We ended up in this, like, pyramid. It must have been, like, I don't know. I don't know if it was in the overworld or not, but... Uh, well, Adrian, he walked out the front door, and he recognized this as being, like, a place that is hundred, well, thousands of miles away from uh, where you guys, like, okay. normally are. So we did end up in the overworld in a pyramid, fighting just bunch of monsters and of course I go down as always it's well, my character what I like tree. is you guys didn't start by fighting a bunch of monsters you guys walked into every single room <laughs> alerted yeah, yeah. every single monster in the pyramid uh, and then it wasn't until you revealed that you had hostile intentions with those monsters like they mostly seemed pretty chill when do we give uh, hostile intentions I believe it was with the Scorpion that you like started a combat. Oh, the the scorpion killed uh Gee, guy Guy. Yeah, yeah. He killed uh Cletus's companion. Yes. And then we attacked the uh, scorpion back. Yes. So and really, then really it was the scorpion's fault. Uh, I yeah, I guess that's fair. Yeah, we opened like eight or nine doors, and each door had different kinds of monsters, like stone golems. And yeah, they 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 were all like different mummies. forms of undead. Yeah, that Skeletons. were working on their own thing. Yep. There was the yeah the the stone carver working on golems, mm -hmm. and there was the the like, school. Yeah, the school <laughs> that was teaching different undead. Um, then the mummy. 
Yeah. He was just chillaxing. Yeah, he was just chillaxing. He was resting. Yeah. No, but it was honestly really funny because, you know, he'd open the door and then the undead would be like, <laughs> oh, uh, oh, no, my, okay, all right. And we'd close the door and <laughs> get out. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, then we all died. <laughs> well, almost, almost, almost all died. Yeah. yeah. That, that last moment when Adrian and Cletus were just walking back to the portal, that was the moment I realized, like, Okay, I need proper chase rules because that was. Uh, I still feel bad about how anticlimactic I made that very last moment where you guys are just like, all right, I guess we're leaving. I was like, all right, I guess you'll leave. <laughs> no, I was more than happy with that. Like, I was like literally unconscious as they dragged oh, yeah. my body out of there. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I'm not entirely sure what would have happened if you guys had got captured. Squad I guess it would have just been. Characters. I like. <laughs> Uh, you either would have all gotten captured and or killed, but definitely w- that would have led to everyone having to make new characters. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, which I like. I, I don't think I'm entirely against. You know, like you guys got yourselves into that situation. Yeah, I've pretty much decided that uh, if Humdo ever dies, I'm taking over uh, Dim Hot. Dim Hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah Dim Hot will be my new character. He'll have a completely different personality. Like he'll be a little bit more timid. He'll be willing well, to no, no, he'll, he'll realize uh, his, like, master uh, Humdu dying. That's the thing that flips the switch. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, this everything is serious now. Like, no, for sure. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking was that if, if Humdu ever dies, Dim Hot will go on a, like, uh, avenging arc where he, like, tries to take over the life of uh, Humdu but realizes that he's not nearly as great. And so he has to... Completely change the way he fights. Yeah. He would be a completely ranged character. <laughs> Just oh, that would be best hilarious. Actually, the West has ever seen. That would actually be great. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Well, this one again. You probably answered this, but uh, which NPC are you most fond of? Oh. Which one do you want to see more? Um. Man. Um. There's so many good NPCs. Is the thing. I feel like a lot of them they don't have particularly strong personalities. Like, yeah. honestly, G- Father Gibo, for how often everyone has <laughs> interacted with him, yeah, exactly. he's just a priest. Mm-hmm. Like, he's got, all he does is he just heals you guys. Yeah, I, uh, um, So he definitely needs, I gotta add some little spice to Gibo <laughs> for how often you guys interact with him. Yeah, I'm somewhere in between, uh, Smorgasbord, what is this guy's name? The Orc? The Orc from yesterday. Oh, yeah, honestly, I really like Gop Gank. Gop Gank. Gop Gank. Even though there. you guys, this is the first session you interacted yeah. with him. I'm already, like, attached to, no, to Gop sure. Gank. No, there's characters, I think. He's got way characters. more personality than Father Gimbo already. No, the best characters are the characters that <laughs> Joe gets to let his own personality shine through. Oh, yeah. They are so obnoxious and frustrating to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. Uh, Gob Gank is easily my favorite. Um, and then the demon from hell. I don't remember his name. Uh, I Yeah, I don't remember if he got a name, honestly. I think he no, did, No, he definitely actually. did, but I forgot. Yeah, no, the bearded devil that was sort of the workers. Yeah, he was just... The workers union of hell. Yeah, sort dude, of that was so funny. The <laughs> so funny. workers' rights Marxist type of... Uh, yep. Yeah, to, like, have better, uh, like, you know, workers' yep, uh, yeah. compensation and what have you for your enslavement and torturing of this damned sure. souls of hell. He had he worked seven days a week, ten da- hours a day, with zero paid vacation days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's bullshit, man. <laughs> <It is, laughs> you yeah. can't work like that. <laughs> yeah, he he was definitely the the slip into the dimension twenty type of uh the sort of goofy angle of looking at any given particular fantasy trope. Yeah, for sure. And making it about capitalism or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, he was funny. Uh, Gob Gank was really funny. Um, yeah, Gob Gank is definitely coming back. Yeah. For sure. Dim Hot, for sure, is... Yeah, Dim Hot, yeah, he's season. just... He's only got... He's a coward, and that's about yeah, about all he's yeah. got going for him. I think, you know, I got a personal connection with him. He feels like my little brother, almost, where, like, <laughs> I gotta take care of him. Oh, yeah, when, when uh, it becomes the punching bag, that's... Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's what a good little brother's for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your, your little brother gets hit so that you can hit back. That's really what happens there. <laughs> um... 
Okay, okay. Now this one, I think we, we've maybe, maybe like glanced at this, but I think we can go a lot deeper into this question. So is there any sort of arc that you have envisioned for your character, Humdu? Yeah, for sure. For so sure. What, what have you got like in mind? Where, so, what are scenes that you would like to either see him have and or like the ending that you imagine that like is set up for him uh, or that you would like to have like set up for him? Okay. Well, I got one scene and an ending. Yes. At the end, for sure, I want him to be just like, I want him to restore the monastery, to take it over, be the strongest warrior there, be like, like the a progenitor of new techniques and all this crazy stuff like i want him to be really like this legendary figure at least in his monastery yeah absolutely uh, like, i'm okay with it not being in the world but in the monastery i want him to be like revered um that too i really want like an anime moment where he like just taps into the year of rage and like uses it to his advantage oh you want to like, tap into okay okay i thought that was what you've like sort of have been doing and you eventually want to come to a point where you have completely expelled it from your life. No, dude, that's... Okay, okay. you want to tap thinking, into your... Okay, that's good to know. That is actually yeah. good to know. No, I'm thinking, like, he... Like, as of right now, he's just been operating as, like, he's been using his rage to get them through situations uh, the whole time scared of falling into, like, going black in the eye and for getting months on end as he just punches his way through trees and villages and <laughs> children. Um, like, just terrified of that reality. Mm-hmm. Terrified of going through that same year of rage that got him So he's been holding back. So he's been holding back the whole time. And but then, he's like, gonna have a moment where he... One day he just, like, brink of death, pit demon, he's fighting the... Or way, maybe way further in the session or something, but... I think pit, pit fiend, pit demon, pit that'd be fiend, a pretty yeah. good. Uh, that'd be a pretty good time to break that out. Yeah, he just lets out all that rage, like seventh gate, fucking guy sensei moment. Yeah, uh, just gah, 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 like, going crazy. Okay, that is pretty good, actually. I do yeah. think that'd be pretty entertaining. And then he has a Bruce Banner moment where he's like, "That's the secret. I'm always angry." <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so I think I've got one. Well, I don't know. Do you, do, okay, okay. I'm sorry. You said you had this. Is this the scene that you had in mind? Yeah, that's tapping the scene into for this. Sure, tapping in. Okay, yeah. okay. And and then the arc is him becoming the new leader of the monastery. Yeah, yeah. But like you know, kind of like a whole yin and yang. Like you have to be angry to be happy, mm. or I don't know, something like that. No, that's actually okay. Okay, so yeah, so he learns. Like the power of moderation and All the balance between both balance. being yeah. angry and when to not be angry. Yeah, yeah. Something like the same uh, sword can cut through paper or steel and not cut paper or something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. That's actually, that is not what I had in mind yeah. before for Humdu. So I, it is good that I just learned that because yeah. now I can start writing around that. Um, okay, so very last question I've got written down here. Do you have any, like, advice for new players? Is there anything that you would impart onto players that have, like, only ever played maybe a single session or have never played a session? Oh, yeah, for sure. Get yourself a good DM. It's not worth playing without a good one. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, um, seriously, though. <laughs> like, uh, I think it's really important to have somebody that's good at DMing. I think it helps you ease into what can really be an uncomfortable situation. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you definitely need to be able to trust. Like, if you... Uh, I've de- I've had multiple experiences where playing with people that I were otherwise complete strangers, and it's just intensely awkward. Yeah, for because sure. Because you don't have any level of trust. You don't want to, like, put yourself out there as your character because, you, like, you don't know what the response or the reaction is going to be. And so, like, you're... In like, your mind is just going to like, okay, well, I'm just going to make the safe play here, which is to hold back. Yeah. Which is definitely less entertaining and less fun for everyone. Yeah, for sure. But then if you do go out there and if you do, like, try and put yourself into your character and then you get, like, a, um, okay sort of response, yeah. there's nothing that feels worse no, than absolutely. that. No, absolutely. you got to be in a comfortable situation through and yeah. through. Um... And then I would definitely say, like, don't be afraid to play your character how your character would be. Like, 
there's always going to be someone at the table that's loudest and uh, has the uh, most opinions and ideas and wants their thing done. But if your character wouldn't do it, don't do it, you know? Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, uh, okay, well, yeah, any, any last words of wisdom or is this uh nope that's it, it. That's all okay well uh thank you my loyal viewers and listeners uh that is it goodbye goodbye